action. What about your dad's sense of style? How, how would you describe it? I feel like you guys are kind of on the same page. It's very kind of this like old school black man coming in to the new world, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and by that, I mean, no, though, this is, this is what I mean by that. This old I mean black by man no, coming into the new old world. Old school, old school. <laughs> and this is what I mean by that. You remember those long, those long suit coats. Damn, yeah. We all moved into our new fabrics, new textures. We learned about textures. Look at you. Yeah. Colors, yes. We moved on. Yeah. We had to make that transition. Like, if, yeah. I, was, if I wanted a son to be physically like me, Magic Johnson's son is physically just like him. Stature and everything, muscles and everything, frame and everything. There's only one caveat. <laughs> he wears dresses. Yeah. <laughs> and so... What does that tell me about Magic Johnson as the man, as the father? Are my children a reflection of who I am as a man? I think so. And so if my children are, are, are drunks and degenerates, what is that? I guess I must have failed as being a dad. I think so. And that's what we're getting at. You know what I'm saying? It's more so like, you know, are you guiding your children? Are you raising your children? Are you putting them in a direction that they should be in? Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? Are people doing that in their households today? And I think it's been, the, I mean, it's been an issue, obviously, since the beginning of time. But I think that is why families fall off. That's why children go in the, uh, the direction they shouldn't, an unrighteous direction, because they're not being guided. Why do we teach our children to vote? So that's why I'm here to make sure I under, help black men understand. First, get out and vote, and then vote for the next president of the United States, Kamala Harris. Well, we teach our children to vote the, reason, uh, the same reason why we vote or why we're conditioned to vote is to think that we're making a change. We have somebody that's gonna represent us uh, in the way that we believe, whichever way it is. That's why we have two parties. If I state an, an objective fact, they'll call me a conspiracy theorist. If I say that the United States of America bombed Iraq and assassinated Saddam Hussein, and after they assassinated Saddam Hussein, they put two candidates, candidate A and candidate B, who knows what their names are. They both represent American interests. If I say that out loud, You'll say, yeah, that happened. That happened in Iraq. And if I say they do the exact same thing in America, you'll say, that's not true. That's not true. Donald Trump and, and Kamala Harris, they're two different people, are they? Representing the exact same organizations, pushing the exact same agenda. It's called Vanguard. It's called BlackRock. It's called venture capitalists who control America. And you tell me to go and cast the ballot because it means what? It means who? I mean, that's true. At the end of the day, they really have the same agenda. I think when we are arguing on Facebook and when we're arguing on social media about who we're going to vote for, we're really arguing about what we personally believe a party is supposed to represent to us and why we're going to cast a vote. Like me, I already know. When I tell people I'm voting for Trump, I cause all kind of ruckus online. And I want to do that. I want to cause those issues because I want to have a conversation to everyone out there is for the, what you just brought up. Why are you voting for who you are voting for? Why? Why are you doing it? A lot of people, they don't have anyone to look up to. And that's a, that's a reflection of us as parents. That's a reflection of our society, that we need superheroes, that we need Magic Johnson, that we need celebrities to, to tell us what we should do and how we should do it. I had a hero in my life, man. My hero is my dad, you know? I watched my dad get up every day at like 5 o'clock in the morning, 4.30, and read the Bible. I would catch him at the kitchen table by himself reading the oldest Bible I ever saw in my entire life. It had so much dust. I mean, I think he got it passed down by Moses. Anyway, I digress. But my dad was my superhero. And my dad, he hates Trump more than any person in the whole world hates Trump. And I tell my dad every time I just nudge him in his ribs. I'm like, man, Donald Trump, his life is like your life because my dad, if he has $5 in his pocket and I need six, he'll find the $6. That's my dad, right? And Donald Trump had a father just like that. Donald Trump had ambitions and his dad says, son, go as far as you possibly can. My father told me, he said, boy, you an eagle. Go fly with the eagles. Don't you be down here pecking with no chickens. My dad told me to be great. And so when I see a man like Donald Trump, who just chooses to be powerful, build businesses. Sometimes businesses fail. This is life, man. Right. Ain't, ain't nobody 100 for 100. Right. <laughs> ain't no basketball player 100 for 100. If a basketball player shoots 60%, he's amazing. Right. I don't have to agree with everything that this man says to respect this man. This man brings masculinity to the table. I mean, we see that. When you look at the last election that he won, in fact, um, over 50% of white women voted for him. I think his son is like six foot eight. 
I think Donald Trump is like 6'3 or something. He's a man of stature. Right. When you walk into a room to negotiate, it means something when you grab another person's hand and you engage in the first contract of, are you stronger than me? Right? It's just a, it's just a silent a competition for power. This is the games that we play in the in the rooms, right, with other individuals. Right. And so if we're talking about politics, in what room does Kamala Harris walk into when she's automatically the most powerful person in the room? She ain't got no more. She ain't got more money than nobody in the room. She ain't <laughs> smarter than nobody in the room. She ain't bigger That's than true. nobody in the room. She ain't stronger than nobody in the room. And so the only thing that she has is for me to be a strong and powerful man and to be chivalrous. And I'm like, but you're a lady. And the points that she really stand on. I mean, when I looked at the bait, the thing that she drove home the most is, I'm going to make sure women have the right to murder those babies. <laughs> She's for women's rights to make their own decision with their body. We got to clap for that. That's what she said, man. So, like, at the end of the day, listen, I truly believe what he just said. At the end of the day, there's money running this thing, dog. Y'all better wake up and realize what's going on. They all play for the same team. Um, I'm voting because I do believe in the voting process. I think we need to all do it, but make it right. But guess what? I can't do that. We need 10 million men to do that. We need 10 million strong men to come together and say, we're going to take the families back. We're going to believe in masculinity again. We're going to have all these agendas that we put together. That's what I need. But in the meantime, and I'm not, I'm not even asking anything right. crazy. Like all you got to do is just really be yourself. All you got to do is do 100 push-ups a day. You're going to activate your chest. You're going to trip your testosterone. And all of a sudden, you're going to feel it in your nuts. You're going to feel like a man. You're going to walk taller. Your shoulders are going to be more broad. They're going to see you from a mile away because you're going to stand tall. Power looks a certain type of way. Confidence looks a certain type of way. And for me to talk like this, you think I'm saying something crazy. No, I'm saying that all you have to do is just be the strongest version of yourself and you're more powerful than the majority of people on the planet because the majority of people on the planet are women. And the average man is stronger physically forced than the average woman. So I'm not afraid of the racism and the bigotry and all that other crap that some people may have in the Republican Party. What I do believe they bring to the table is realness. We can have real conversations. You can be racist, but guess what? You're not going to tell me what I can do. You're not going to tell me can do because we belong here so guess what as men we gonna come together and get it right or we're gonna have to get some get right in the situation that's what we on now as far as when you talk about uh the softness and the the liberalism that happens ar around in this society i'm not for that i'm just not gonna i'm not gonna support it. i'm not supporting kamala because you want to know why black. i don't ever use my name why because i don't subscribe to this government system people will target you in the in the digital world if they think that you have a physical uh, actual physical presence mm -hmm. there are weak people out here who use geolocation nerds the only way that we can combat the algorithms the only way that we can combat this oppressive system is to just really be effective men that means to respect our surroundings that means to respect our women and when you do the things that are just supposed to be done that just to be a righteous man everything looks different we're contributing to the debauchery because we like it. Man, I, I love seeing a woman in, in Spanx and all this type of, of revealing clothing. I love it because I love the woman, but, but that's not love. I'm lusting after her. I'm not respecting her, I'm not respecting myself. And so when I, I started off and I wanted to ask about Magic Johnson and can you judge a man based on his offspring? Yeah, yeah, you can. The same way he has a son that looks just like him and he's choosing not to participate in masculinity, Donald Trump has a son that looks just like him. And they're all competing to be better versions of Donald Trump, whether you like it or not. These powerful people, their children are competing to be a better version of them. And so I'm asking like, hey, hey, dad, I'm trying to be a better version of you. You hear me? <laughs> I want to make my granddad proud. I want to make my great granddad proud. I want my the ancestors of free slaves to be like, man, the, the boy did right. <laughs> As men, <laughs> and you know, we we often talk about patriarchy a lot. You hear in the feminism movement, they talk about patriarchy a lot. But this is what patriarchy produced. It produced strong men that's going to go out and protect their families, take care of their families, set an agenda, set a standard for the family. That's what patriarchy produced. I had my father. I had my father that also worked his entire life down to where he barely can. My father has Parkinson's now. My father just had a brain tumor removed from his from his from his. Head, you know what I'm saying? He's still up here managing his business and doing what he has to do and worrying about how he can take care of his family. 
And that's what I'm stepping up to do for him and come in and step in because I had that father. I came up in that two parent household. We need that. That's what America is about. That's how you can make a society thrive in them. You know, they used to market to the family. Oh, you can get the home. You can get the car. They used to market to the family. They don't even market to the family. They've no always more. marketed to the woman because the woman has always had the buying power because I go to work and when I go to work, man, I ain't got time to be thinking about these bills or shopping or anything like this. I need a person to be of assistance so that we can actually have a powerful unit. And as soon as we said the word equality, everyone's brains just got fried. Because all of a sudden you thought that you should do what I was doing. And that's not what equality is. Equality is that you do the things that you do best and you do them to the best of your ability. That's equality. huh? I can't ask no guard to be no center. I love talking sports because men love sports. huh? Like sports are, are, are homoerotic. <laughs> men running around in very skimpy outfits, just throwing balls and playing with balls, double balls, triple balls, as these niggas play with balls, huh? <laughs> the NFL, the NBA. Oh, yeah. These gentlemen are the highest paid employees in America. And so, man, I, I was when I, I, mean, I keep going back to dang Magic Johnson because I was watching him. He endorsed Kamala Harris. And as he stood on the stage, he said he knew her for 20 years, and Magic Johnson is six foot eight. And all you got to do is look at the optics because this is. Kamala Harris is going to be the leader of the free world, right? And so when you got a woman standing next to a man who's damn near seven foot tall and she's looking up, it's like, man, if she walks into a room with a, a per, any, any world leader that's of stature, she walks in immediately looking up at these gentlemen, raising their hand up like this here. You it's, think that was a terrible move for them to do that? The optics are horrible, <laughs> horrible. Man, I, 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 Mr. Magic Johnson, just send me a check, huh? <laughs> you know, another thing too. It seems like when she's not, to your point, and we talked about this earlier, if she's not looking at a teleprompter, I will say this: this is a major critique on uh, Kamala. Today we got thirty-two days until the election. <laughs> so thirty-two days. 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right. 32 days. And we know we will do it. Uh, she's not looking at a teleprompter. Uh, or she's not well rehearsed. It seems like she don't know what to say. She just doesn't seem like a powerful person. Like confidence means that I can walk into a room and dominate a room just because I can. They say Donald Trump, because it feels as if I'm defending Donald Trump. I'm not defending Donald Trump. I'm just looking at the options that exist. And he could walk into a room and just start talking because he has world experience. He, he's done deals all around the world. You don't have to like the person, but you can't dismiss his resume. We are. Trump is a household name because he made his he made his name a household name. And that's important. All of us want us, our, we, it's envy and jealousy. We see Donald Trump and we think, hell yeah, it's impossible for me to ever be him because my dad will never give me this money. But you don't think that your dad loves you just as much as Donald Trump's father loves him? Now, the way that you put your energy into your children is how you put your energy into your children. Stop being a complainer and figure out how you can lead that to your children. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. Baby boomers, they're getting older. Many of them has, have purchased homes. Many of them have assets that they're going to pass to you. We are behind. Listen, we just we talked about this offline. We just got free 1965. We are generations behind, but we need to say to ourselves that we're going to catch up. We're going to figure out how to start making it better for the next generation. You know what y'all problem is, though? Y'all want to do it today. Y'all want to put the eyelashes and the wee hair weave in today. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to wear the tight jeans and an expensive belt buckle today. Y'all trying to do it all. Y'all complaining because y'all want it now. That's why y'all want everything free, too. We're just a teenager. When it comes to geopolitics, we are just... When it comes to politics in general, the black person is, is literally a teenager. We're learning how to, to govern ourselves. We're learning how to create community and, and, and build businesses. And this is just a fact. But if you lie and try to play pretend and be like, man, I'm a descendant of a king. I know everything. A person who says they know everything, guess what they know? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. And so you can't even you can't even start nowhere. I was man, okay, this is a terrible story. But I, I was having a conversation with a white man. And the conversation was, to me, it was a normal conversation. But I was working with a black man. A black man who wanted to be the biggest black man in the world. 
And so he started telling stories about uh, he met he met Dick Cheney and he 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 saved the world with a paperclip. This black man was talking to me and talking. The white man was looking at me and I'm looking at him. And us not trying to like to say the white man is so great. But he's like, man, why is he acting like this? And I'm thinking to myself, man, why is he acting like this? He's trying to impress me and he's trying to impress the white man. And it looks so crazy. It looks so crazy. And if you just stop trying to impress the white man, if you stop trying to act like you're the biggest black man in the whole entire world, I'm black and I'm black and I'm black and I'm black. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All you got to do is just and you a man, the best version of yourself. You a man. I don't get up here and be like, racism is preventing me from what? I'm finna get in. If it's a problem, again, we finna make it a problem. I'm gonna go get what's mine. I can do that. And if and if there's no access, then I gotta create the access point. There may be different access points to get there, but I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna get with like-minded men and make it happen. I'm not gonna be afraid of this white man and start talking different when I get around him or not be able to have a real po a political conversation with him either. You know, we have to, men have, black men have to feel comfortable being men. Hey, for the black intellectual a lot of you individuals i would call your name out you in the conscious community you feel very uncomfortable being in a room of men who, who don't come from the ivory towers right when you're in the room with regular men you can't shoot this shit with regular men and so like you try to other me you try to sun me the boule the talented 10th all these individuals with degrees you think because you got a piece of paper that makes you special yes and I think the Constitution is what makes it special, right? You know, equal rights for everybody, whether you have a degree or not. Because right now, I think like 60% of the, of the adult population in America, we do not have college degrees. So we're the majority. So when you try to talk down to me because you read a book, I, I probably read the same book that you have and have a different critique and analysis of that same literature. And so I just ain't have no person pat me on my head and say, I did a good job. I told myself I did a good job. And I can debate you on those points. But... For me to say that, we got to stop feeling uncomfortable, nigga. I'm not trying to shit on you. I need Point Dexter. I, I, need, I need financial and analysis. Oh, I said that word, analysis? <laughs> analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but the person who does it, an analyst. Right. Yeah. Analyst. yeah. I need a financial analyst, right? I Point Dexter. I need niggas to read books to come out and say, you pronounced that word wrong. And I said, man, I pronounced it wrong because I wanted to have a very specific, I wanted to land. Nigga, I know where I'm at. You, don't you know it's the politicians, depending on the region they yet, it's how the vernacular they use. They're trying to talk to the people. I'm trying to talk to my people. Nigga, I know where the hell I stay yeah, at. Kamala do that one day. Don't you want some jobs? <laughs> don't you want to feel good? You, you, know better, name, you better thank a union member. <laughs> you better thank a union member. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so these people, that every, uh, everybody's putting on. Well, look, you may not be a union member. You better thank a union member. <laughs> For the five-day work week, you better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Like, there's a whole trend of authenticity and just be yourself. Man, being yourself means to be the best version of yourself. Motherfucker, it means to work hard. I know I'm getting excited because it makes me mad. We, we just started accepting mediocrity like it was cool or something. Nah, man. Everybody's man, a winner. If, if the white <laughs> man could do it, then I can do it too. I heard when Chris Rock did the stand-up special and he said that uh, the average white man was living next to him. He's like, man, I'm one of the best comedians. And the other, he lives in New Jersey. And the, uh, the other black people in the community was uh, Mary J. Blige and Jay-Z. And he was like, the person who lives next to me, he's just a dentist. And so he was like, we're supposed to aspire to being average. They can do that. But for me, I don't even, I'm not even competing with the white man. I'm not competing with no black man. I'm competing with myself. I'm trying to be the best version of myself. I want to be able to tell my grandpappy that I did good. I want God to say, man, you did a good, you did a good job. That's you, exactly correct. Man. You reach your full potential. <laughs> and the only way we do that is to believe we can actually do it. I don't care how cliche that sounds. I don't care how after school special that sounds. You it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like that to me. But, but you know, a lot of people when you say just believe in yourself, nah, for real. Like you gotta have con you have to have confidence in who you are and know that you can do it. Bro, you, yeah. The world is full of losers. A lot of people in my social circle, they don't have the confidence to believe in themselves. Right. And for me to say it, they think that I'm trying to put them down. No, I'm not trying to put you down. Like hell. We think that being aspirational is delusional. We think that working hard is aspiring to be white. And it's weird as shit. No, no, I don't even I don't aspire to a color. I aspire to greatness. <laughs> We're going to be millionaire, millionaires in a year, bro. 
That's where I'm going at. I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to, I want to change. You can't change a community until you change yourself. A lot of y'all need to understand that y'all are getting up here asking for the change that you aren't even willing to make for yourself. You have to start with you. You got to look at the man in the mirror, as Michael Jackson said. You make the change with you, then you can make the change around you. I started laughing. Now, you might, you, th- you might think I'm being cliche, but I don't even think numbers matter. I think that like, the good things are just a byproduct of doing good things, right? right. Like, I just want to help people. I see niggas, they, wanna run, they run around the hood and they give money, they record it. No, like, just give the money because you know the money needs to be given. Me, me, me being grateful uh, to, to, to live gratitude is to touch heaven. And so for me to be grateful for the opportunity that I get to spend with my family and my friends, like, nigga, I ain't got to put that shit on Facebook. When, I, when I'm chopping it up with you, there's a time for everything. This is a time to chop it up. This is a time to plan, plot, and strategize because I'm tired of people playing in my face. Worst to retire in 2025. Well, they playing in my face. I heard a congresswoman say the whole ass shit. <laughs> hey, Marjorie want- Taylor Greene was playing in my face. I want that plan in my face shit to be retired right now. <laughs> that that need that needs to be gone right today. I don't want to hear no more plan. You hey, let's get that old uh, hood rat hoochie mama ass shit up out of here in twenty twenty four. It's man. okay to be a nigga, but it's not okay to pretend to be a nigga. Like it it just feels like. You know, the white boy who shows up and he starts talking with the slang, it feels the exact same way from these niggas that come from these HBCUs. I'm like, motherfucker, you talking about you were struggling at college. Your mama paid for you to go to college and she bought you a car. These mother, they be faking the funk. I'm tired of these rich <laughs> niggas playing. Your mama bought you a car, dog. Or like Cor- or Cornell West when you pop lock in. And- it's not that I'm being ugly. This is a class system. Your mama yeah. bought you a car. If you have a car at 16, your whole life changes. You get to go to PSATs on Saturday. You get to make it to tour days because you got the, 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 the resources to do it. There's a class divide in America, but y'all can't see past color. And and I want to see past color, but you think I'm a nigga. And it makes it very difficult that I see you as a whole person and you see me as, man, you're a good one, Kevin. And maybe want to just slap the shit out of you and be like, man, stop playing. I hate that too. <laughs> because you're not racist, am I supposed to tell you that you're one of the good ones? Right. Am I supposed to like, are we not supposed to acknowledge that at least 40% of America is still racist? How, however direction, you, Mexicans hate blacks, whites hate blacks, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times, most of the hate is coming towards black, you know what I'm saying? It's very That's a fact. It's very unidirectional. That's a fact. And it makes you feel uncomfortable, but you know, but then as soon as you become my friend, you tell me I can't go to your house because your mama don't like niggas, right? As soon as we become friends, you tell me that the people in your intimate circle don't like niggas, but you still want me to respect you as a person. And I'll be like, nigga, just tell the truth that you know people don't like niggas. Golly. And that's all we're saying, because at the end of the day, I know y'all probably say, hey, these are some conservative views. Oh, look at them. Y'all just, uh, I had somebody in the comments say, oh, you sound, that's giving me mass energy. Nah, dog, I know we black. Don't y'all hear what we talking about? We understand that we're black men, but we want you to start talking as a man and be up front to voice your opinions in front of anybody. We still know we black. Nah, we not kissing no white man's feet. We're not saying that we... I'm not we, kissing no man's feet. No, no man's feet. feet. <laughs> not kissing no man's feet. But I'm saying, like, we're not in praise of... We're not giving massive energy. Now, we want y'all to think and wake up. We Because guess what? At the end of the day, we're Americans. Stop thinking like niggas. Uh, man, sometimes you got to just tell it like it is. You go to a church, they slap it, the thighs, tell it like it is, and make it plain, right? Yeah. The moment that you can't compete women, right? The moment that you can't compete, when I start being strong, you call me misogynistic, right? Niggas, when, when white people start fucking, when they out-compete you, you say it's racism, huh? Like, if I start to out-compete another black person, they tell me that I'm acting white, you'll say anything to discredit me, any ad hominem attack that doesn't actually attack the premise that I'm working harder than you, that I'm actually investing in myself, that I'm actually building and making the alliances to be powerful. But since you haven't invested and done the work, guess what you can say? Guess what you can say? You can't say shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm shitting on you motherfuckers that want to invest in yourselves. I'm inviting every person who wants to do 100 push-ups and read three books a year to come and work with powerful men who are deciding that we're going to change the material existence of men in America. The 10 million man march, bro. <laughs> You're the greatest American love. Did, anybody, hey, your daddy didn't hug you and say that he loved you. I'm going to hug you, tell you I love you in the most hyper-masculine way possible. Nigga, pause. I love you. Because you're the greatest American alive. Is that too much? Nah, I is that think too that's much a good sauce? way to end. <laughs> is that too much sauce? Did I put too much on it? I think that's a good way to end. Nah, that's what's up. Motherfucker. <laughs> the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest.
greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.